in our lives, for your wonderful presence in this church. For your presence, Lord, reminds us of who we are, reminds us, Lord, of where we are going in the midst of this uh, life, Lord, that many times feels like a desert, you bring a hope, you bring a future, you bring your glory in the picture, oh Lord. And we thank you that we can worship at your feet. And bless us this morning, minister to our hearts, Lord. We want to receive from you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First of all, I'd like to thank you and my brothers and sisters because even this month hearing uh, different people share in the church has been a real blessing to me. Uh, we've, had, we've had Brother Darren, we've had uh, Jimmy and Dennis and Emma, maybe I've forgotten some people, but every time people share, it's a blessing for me because I want to see the, the people of God take their place. Amen? Amen? And when they take their place, when people of God take their place, where they are called, it's a joy. That is why this church exists. Is that the people of God will grow and have a voice and bring others to salvation. So it, it has been a real joy for me. Pastor always says, I don't care about the numbers, and really, I, I, I feel the same. But I do care about the growth of people. Because if we don't grow, it's like having a child who will not grow. It is purposeless. God has not created us purposeless. He has created us with a plan. And my joy is to see that plan happen in people's lives. There's no greater joy for me than to see God's plan happen in my children's lives. It doesn't mean I'm not happy when they, they get their A's in school, or I'm not happy when they come and say, oh, I can do a, uh, my, my daughter does these, these crabs and these, um, what do they call them, handstands. <laughs> she would flip if, I, if she knows I forgot that word, because she shows me the handstands millions of times. Look how I can do it, look. And it's, it's a joy to see our children grow. But I know there is a, a higher purpose for their life. Amen? Amen. And, and I want to see it. I want to see it in their lives. That's my joy. Amen? So it's been a joy to, to receive from you and, and to learn from you and to share my life with you. Um, that's, that's the first. And my, my message for today is called Remember. I'm, I'm the person who forgets the most, I tell you. My mind is becoming really impossible. I'm growing older. <laughs> and I have to remember um, things that pertain to five people, okay? So about 10 years ago, uh, let's say up to even five years ago, pastor used to tell me, do you, do you remember that I told you this? And I say, yes. Write it down. I say, I don't need to write. My mind is a timetable. If you say Tuesday, my mind writes it Tuesday. I had a very good memory. And so we used to sometimes be in church and, and maybe a person would say, Pastor, I have to come and see him on Tuesday. And Pastor would say, yes. And I'd say, no, Tuesday you have to. How did you know? Because I have a timetable that's engraved in my mind. You know? Because you have to be quick. And, and many times my diary is, gets lost or, or Pastor's diary gets lost. You've heard me say many times, don't phone pastor or tell him when he's, you know, tell me, I'll tell him, because he will lose the day. But um, lately I have realized, and my husband has realized, you're forgetting more than I do. Then yes, my memory chip is full. You know when your memory chip is full, what you do with it? You get another memory chip or you empty it. I say, who's going to empty my memory chip? Who's going to give me a new one? So this sermon is my prayer to the Lord. Give me a new memory chip. Because my, my memory chip is full. I have to remember so many things. And uh, those of you who are mothers know, you have to remember. Now school starts. Where is Rashida? Okay, you have to remember which copybook for which day. Come on. 
I mean, I'm an adult and I have to remember my children's things when they forget. I have to remember when to take them for music school, when to take them for gymnastics, when to do this, when to go for parents' meetings. Uh, you think, Rashida this morning said, raising kids is the hardest job in the whole world. So yeah, you have to remember, because you're taking care of people is the hardest job. You want to get your A's in university, it's easy. But taking care of people is the hardest job, because people have many needs. Children have many needs. And it's not just food. It's not just remembering to feed them. Ah, oh, I remember to feed my baby. Now I can leave him on the sofa. Wow, <laughs> would be good. <laughs> now I have to remember to change their nappy. Because if you forget and someone rings your doorbell and comes in the house, they go, oh, what's that smell? <laughs> Marcel, you need to change your baby's nappy. <laughs> you know? When I had my, my children were babies, I used to think, oh, when they grow up, then I can relax. Now I have to remember even more. Because their needs have changed. They've become more complicated. They understand more. Now I can talk to them more about God. I feel the responsibility. When they go through situations at school, I have to sit down and talk with them and pray with them. And sometimes God just draws my attention and says, you need to spend time with this guy. You need to spend time with this child. So the needs never end. And so my message is remember, because I have to confess that one of my struggles for the last, uh, Ezekiel was born, he's now almost nine, I even forget. For the last nine years has been, Lord, please help me not to forget you. I want to remember you. I want to keep uh, close to you. I want to remember your presence. And the Bible says it, that as time goes by, as we near the end times, the heart of man will grow cold. And it's not just unbelievers. I would like to believe that all unbelievers' hearts will grow cold, and all believers' hearts will be on fire, and we will convert the world. We, we like to believe it, but the Bible says it will be a struggle to keep our faith. We have to fight for it. We have to be at Jesus' feet. We have to stare the fire. You know? And the Lord provides, but we have to take the step. And I know this. And so my prayer is, Lord, you know, I have three kids. You know the responsibilities I have. Help me not to forget you. Sometimes before I sleep, I say, Lord, my heart's growing cold. I don't feel the fire. It's become a routine. And have you ever felt that your Christian life is a routine? Yeah. Say, Lord, you have to get me out of this. Only your spirit can get me out of this. And sometimes I cry to the Lord, give me a vision, give me a dream. And that's why I dream a lot. Sometimes my dreams, in my dreams, God speaks. Because in my day is full. But God is merciful. He listens to the cry of our hearts. Let's find Habakkuk 3.2. And somebody can read it for me. The person who finds it first can read it. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Lord, I have heard of your awesome deeds. Renew them in our day. For what? So we can come close to the Lord, so we can remember him, so the fire can keep burning. Amen? This is the cry of the people of God, not just today, or not just towards the end times. 
These are the kind of people of God always. 